Today we're going to discuss solving one-step and two-step equations. First of all, whenever you're going to solve a one-step addition or subtraction equation, you're trying to isolate your variable and you need to get your variable alone. To do that, we're going to do the inverse operation to get it to the other side, which means if it's an addition equation, we are going to subtract what is with my variable from both sides. If it's a subtraction equation, we're going to add what is with my variable to cancel it out and leave my variable alone and isolate it to both sides. So right here, in our first example, it's going to say x plus 5 equals 9. I'm going to, because I am adding 5 right here, I am going to subtract 5 from both sides of my equation. This isolates my variable to allow me to have the x alone, and then 9 minus 5 is 4. Under subtraction, I have a negative 14, which is just really subtraction, added to my x. I need to make it go away, so this needs to go away. To do that, I'm going to add 14 to both sides. The x comes down, 6 plus 14 equals 20. Negative 14 plus 14 is 0, so I've isolated my variable. With multiplication and division, it is the same way. You're going to do the same, the, the reciprocal operation, or the inverse operation to both sides so that you can solve the equation. You're undoing the equation. So here, I have 2x plus 7, i oh, sorry, 2x equals negative 7. So here, because I am multiplying, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Notice I keep saying both sides. You have to show your work on both sides of your equation. It's balance beam. So therefore then, x equals negative 7 halves. I can leave it as a fraction. I do not need to simplify it. On our last example written out, it has x divided by 6. Sorry, w divided by 6 equals 11. So because I'm dividing, I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. So therefore, these cancel out, and x equals 66. Okay, let's look at some examples in our notes. I do need to remember that whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to show my work on the other side of my equation as well. So on number one, I am adding 8, so I'm going to do the, the um, inverse operation, and I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. This makes my 8s cancel out to 0, and I'm left with y equals 4. Now it says I need to check number 1 as well. With a check, what I'm doing is ensuring that what I found my variable to be actually makes a true equation, and my answer is correct. So I will take the 4, rewrite my original equation, take the 4 and substitute it in, and I will prove that the answer I found works. Because 12 equals 12, it's a true equation, so therefore I am correct. On number 2, I have addition, but I have a negative 12. Remember, negativity is subtraction. So I'm going to add 12 to create a 0, but I have to do it on both sides. So I'm left with m equals 9. So I'm going to take my original, substitute in, prove it works. That's checking an equation. On number 3, I have a subtraction equation. So therefore, I'm going to add the 1 to both sides. That goes away to 0. I'm left with d equals negative 8. Do not lose your negatives. The check will help to make sure you don't do that. When I substitute in, at this point here, if I had lost my negative, my two sides of my check would not be equal. I would have the wrong answer. On number four, I have a multiplication equation, so I'm going to divide both sides. I do not use a division sign. I use a division bar. 
I'm left with W because 7 divided by 7 is 1, negative 8. On number 5, I have a division equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by what is being divided. 4 as a whole uh, fraction is 4 over 1. The 4's will cancel out. So here, 5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 1 is 8. 20 over 8 reduces. I do not put more than 1 equals in a sentence. The equals should follow straight down. I shouldn't have equals, equals, equals. I should reduce underneath. I'm going to reduce by 4 and get 5 halves. If I'm given a fraction, I should have a fractional answer. But notice how my equation equals come straight down. I do not have an equals and equals and equals and equals further down my page. The variable only equals one number. All right, so here I have a fraction. I'm going to just rewrite it underneath so you can see what I'm doing. Remember, whenever I'm solving a fraction one-step equation, I'm going to, you can't divide by a fraction. That makes no sense, but dividing by a fraction is multiplying by its reciprocal. So I multiply both sides by the reciprocal, four-thirds, create my fraction. That will cancel out. So I'm left with, now in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and reduce before I multiply. I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. So I'm left with the whole number 12. Again on number 6, you cannot divide a fraction. Dividing a fraction means keep change flip multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, in our two-step equations, it just means I have two steps that I have to do. I still want to isolate my variable, and I'm going to undo all the operations around it. When I undo my operations, I'm working order of operations in reverse, which means that I'm always going to add or subtract first, then multiply or divide. Second, and then, if I have a parenthesis, I'd work that last. Because I'm working order of operations backwards. That's what I'm doing when I'm solving an equation. I'm undoing what I did. Okay, so in example one, I have 2 minus m equals 9. First of all, the minus m is the same thing as a minus 1m. That's why it's a two-step equation. I don't want a negative m. Nothing negative about us. I want a positive m. So just like I did before, I had the 2 to get rid of it. I'm going to subtract the 2 from both sides. So I have negative m equals 7. I have a negative m right here. I have to have a negative m right there. It doesn't just go away because he's negative. So then now, to get rid of the negative m, I can just multiply or divide both sides by negative 1, and I get m is negative 7. It's two steps because I subtracted first, then I multiplied by negative 1. Now, example 2 <clears throat> is one you all tend to have a harder time with. What you have to remember is whenever I have something in my numerator, there is that imaginary parenthesis. If I was doing order operations, you would know I have an imaginary parenthesis there. So am I going to work that portion first? No, I'm working order of operations backwards. So I need to get rid of my denominator first by multiplying both sides by four. Remember, this right here is in an imaginary parenthesis. So I multiply both sides by four, so my denominator goes away here, and then when I multiply by 4 here, I get 9 fourths. Now I can undo that parenthesis by subtracting 1 from both sides and getting 5 fourths is my final answer. Again, this one here, you cannot do anything with the numerator until you have multiplied that denominator. You have that imaginary parenthesis. You do it last. Okay? All right, so let's look at some of these examples we have down here. So, on number 7, 7 says 5x minus 19 equals 21. 
All right, I'm gonna add or subtract first. So because right here I've got minus 19, I'm gonna add 19 to both sides. My 5x comes down because I've done nothing with my 5x. 21 plus 19 is 40. Now I have a multiplication equation so I can divide both sides by what's with my variable, x equals eight. Now it says to check seven, eight, and nine. So 5x minus 19 equals 21. I write my original. I plug in what I found. And because I'm solving the numerical expression on the left-hand side of my equation, I follow order of operations. You have to remember, when you're solving, you're doing order of operations backwards. When you're checking, you're doing it forwards. On number eight, I'm adding five, so the first thing I'm doing is getting rid of the five on both sides. So two-thirds y equals one. I have a fraction, so I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. That cancels out y is 3 halves. To check it, I have 2 thirds times 3 halves plus 5 equals 6. This cancels down to 1 plus 5 equals 6, so I am 100% correct. On number 9, I cannot forget about my hidden parentheses. So therefore here, I need to get rid of my denominator by multiplying both sides by two. Makes my denominator here go away. I'm left with x minus five equals 22. Now I've got a simple one-stepper, x equals 27. To check it, because it said seven, eight, and nine, I'm gonna plug in 27. 20, now order of operations, tell me I'm doing the numerator first. Yay, I'm 100% correct. Number 10 is just a bunch of fractions, big deal. Before I start finding common denominators and such, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the one half over. Why? Because that's what you do. Then I'll find a common denominator for everything, so I don't need it for everything. So I have one fifth W equals, all right, so right here, whenever you have a fraction and an equation, it's gonna look a little messy. Because I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find my common denominator off to the outside. Yes, it looks funny, yes, it looks weird, but unfortunately it happens that way. Add them together and I get 5 fourths. Now I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal because I have a fraction. Multiply my numerator, multiply my denominator, I'm done, I do not need to reduce any further. Number 11, again, imaginary parenthesis. So I need to get rid of the three in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by three. That means my numerator, my denominator cancel out and I'm left with x plus three, six times three is 18. Now I have a one-step equation. Bam, I'm done. Number 12, straightforward. Add or subtract first. Bring down my x term. One-step multiplication, so I'm gonna divide. x is two. On number 13. Add or subtract first, and you get rid of the 12. So 2x equals negative eight. One step multiplication, divide. Don't lose my negative. On this one right here, I need to be careful. That is minus 2a. So when I get rid of the 3 sevenths by subtracting it off, it's negative 2a. Don't lose the negative. 4 sevenths minus 3 sevenths is 1 seventh. Now, I'd like to say I could just divide both sides by 2, 
but I have a fraction. So we know whenever I have a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Bam, I'm done. Be careful, take your time, and do what you need to do. Thank you.